Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another tutorial in the Buttons Design in GameMaker Studio 2.3 series. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the Mouse Manager. We talked a lot about the Mouse Manager and why we would use it in the 2.25 version when we first created it. I'll have a link up at the top there. However, I do want to cover it again briefly here just for some background. Essentially, now that we have a grabbable button, we have the ability to have multiple buttons selected at the same time both the grabbable button and the other buttons our mouse uh, or the touch might be over and we needed a way to fix that my solution was creating a centralized sort of abstracted interface called a mouse manager so we have a single instance of our mouse manager and it communicates with the various buttons and the buttons communicate with it to find out whether or not they can be selected specifically they use scripts to communicate and that's where we have a major change in 2.3 in 2.3, we no longer have scripts like we did in 2.25. And this is actually one of the bigger changes in 2.3. Now what you have are script files. Script files themselves are not functions, but you can put functions inside of them. And in fact, you can put as many functions as you would like inside of one. And they're very useful for grouping like functions together, making exports, etc. It really just, it makes managing your code so much simpler. Now say, instead of having 30 to 40 different scripts, all related to something specific, like maybe a vector library or a math library of some kind, you can put all of those into one script file. This cleans up your resource tree a lot, makes it a lot easier just to work with scripts, I think, in general. The next new thing that we're gonna be talking about in 2.3 is another way to create a function. So we already talked about this version right here. It creates a method or assigns a function to a method variable, and we've been using it inside of our instances and our buttons to pass along different events for those buttons. It takes the form name equals function and then the arguments and the brackets and all the code would go in that bracket. However, there is another way to make functions in 2.3 and that is to use this method right here, function name arguments. And that's the method that we're going to be using in this tutorial. So what are the differences between these two different types of functions or between these two ways to make functions? Well, the first method, the one that we've been using, assigns a function to a variable. It's referred to as a method in the manual. It will not get a script ID, it'll just be a variable, and that variable will have the type of method. And because it's a variable, it has scope. The other version, the version that we'll be using in this tutorial, function name arguments, when used in a script file, will function identically to scripts in 2.25. When used in a script file is key here. You can also use this version in instances, but it will have slightly different aspects when used in an instance. But when used in a script file, they'll be global in scope, any instance will be able to use it, and the code inside of it will run from inside of that instance. Unlike the first version that we talked about, the method version, this will get a script ID, and that ID will have the type of number, just like in 2.25. So this is not a complete breakdown of all the nuances between uh, these two versions and what it would do if you use them in a script file versus using them in an instance. But I wanted to provide a simple rule that will make it easy for you to know which version to use without running into too many problems. And that is this. Use function name arguments in script files and use name equals function arguments in objects. I do want to stress that this is not a hard and fast rule. You can use both versions in script files and in objects, but when you use the method version in script files, there are a number of other things you have to take into account, and same with using the function version inside of an object. So if you want to keep things simple, uh, this is an easy way to do it. And with that, let's jump over to the code and actually see some of this in action. All right, let's start making a mouse manager. As with 2.25, the first thing we'll do is create separate groups so we can have our buttons. We can put our buttons, all our button objects in that folder. Then we can create a group for the mouse manager. Now let's create our mouse manager object. Name it mouse manager. Doesn't need a sprite. We have two events for this. The actual mouse manager code won't change a whole lot from the first one. We will have our create event and our create event will simply have button selected equals false and button ID equals no one. And then we need our begin step event. So we will create a begin step event. 
And our begin step event still just needs uh, one line of code, button ID equals instance position, mouse X, mouse Y, button parent. So that's all the same as before. But now we get to create our first script file. We'll come over here, create script, and let's just delete all of this. Mouse manager scripts. And let's call it uh, mouse manager script file. And now we're going to recreate the three scripts that we had in 2.2 for our mouse manager, but we're gonna make them all right here. So our first script was return button ID. So, and that is with the mouse manager return button ID. Otherwise, return no one. And we talked about this pattern in our mouse manager 2.25. Then we want to create another function button is selected with mouse manager return button selected otherwise return false and then finally we have set button selected because we want to be able to select it and we'll say selected we can name variables as we've discussed before. Ten, I tend to uh, prefix them with uh, underscore to avoid any complications with naming variables the same. Button selected equals false. So all of these scripts are exactly the same as they were in 2.25. But in 2.25, we just had this portion for each script because of the how scripts work. But now with script files, we can include all of them here, and this will create the scripts which will function identically to 2.25. One thing I didn't mention, but you probably saw me do, is that you can mix and match assets and folders now. So I have both the script file and the mouse manager object in the mouse manager folder, and this can be useful, or you could just stick with how you did it in 2.25. So now we need to update our buttons. The first thing we want to do is come over to button parent. We'll delete the mouse enter and mouse leave events in just a moment, but let's actually create the step event first. So here we have our button parent. Let's call it uh, update selected button parent. First thing we want to do is save the previous version of selected. Then we have our check if the button is not selected. Then selected will equal return button ID equals id or self. So we're saying if no button is selected right now, then if the mouse is currently over this button, so that's return button ID equals id, this button will be selected. Otherwise, it'll be false. Else if return button ID does not equal this button, then selected equals false. And then finally, we want to actually update our selected. So if there is a change, so again, remember this is a pretty straightforward pattern. We have our previous selected set to our selected at the start of this. Then we see if we want to change selected. And now if selected was changed, these will not be equal. Oops, I forgot the there we go. These will not be equal. And if they're not equal, we know that there's been a change and we need to update our button. So the first thing we'll do is set button selected. Selected. There we go. And then we just want to make a simple if statement. And for this, we can simply copy over the code and then delete those events. And then we can delete both of these. The mouse enter, we don't need this anymore. And the mouse leave, we don't need that anymore. And then the only other thing we need to do 
if you remember from 2.25 is come over to the grabbable parent, go into, uh, whoops, we have to inherit. Inherit the step event and just say if grabbed, exit. And let's come up here and just say uh, grabbable parent inherit so that we know when we look at it that it is inheriting that step event. All right, let's run it and see if this works. So I ran it and came across an error, which you probably already caught. Uh, this should very definitely be button selected equals the argument that we pass in. All right, now let's run it again. Okay, so everything still gets selected. We can still click them. Toggle button still works. And now we don't select any other buttons when we've grabbed this one. All right, that's all of the code. So in summary, in 2.3, we can group functions together into a single script file, and you should use the function name version in script files and the name equals function version in instances or objects. The links in this slide will be below. I recommend checking them all out. The first two are to the manual, the new manual, and the third one I've linked to before, and it is to a short tutorial on methods and functions in general. Reading through these, watching the tutorial, and experimenting yourself are a great way to get a better handle on methods and functions in 2.3. And that's it. Thanks for watching.